download my free legato course right now and learn to play fast in the fastest way possible. So we're talking improvisation here and the previous video we talked about what that really is. We need to understand that in order to just start learning it. And secondly, we talked about uh, what are really the, the, the basic disciplines of being able to improvise. Because if we just try to practice improvising, just come up with stuff as the music is playing, then we're not really practicing the skill of improvisation. It's like, you know, it's like saying, okay, this is our painting class. And here are 12 different colors that you can, you know, mix and blend without knowing how. And this is a, a canvas. Go paint something, man. That's an expression, expression of your unique soul. And your, you know, it's just, yeah, you can do that. But how fun is that? You need a craft. You need to be able to paint, right? You need techniques. Give me something, right? And though we use scales and we use arpeggios, we use picking techniques and we use all of that, improvisation is a skill in and of itself that has sub-skills. And we need to learn those. And we talked about that in the previous two videos. We got rhythm, well, we talked about that shortly. Then we got ear training, how to train your ear for improvisation. And then in this video, we're going to practice something that is so important, which is structure. Like when I'm talking, I'm talking in sentences. And sometimes I'm actually taking a little break in between the sentences. Sometimes I'm taking a break right in the middle of a sentence, right? To kind of stress something. It always, it, it's got structure and it goes up and down. And I have, you know, my voice isn't totally just speaking at the same level all the time because that would be incredibly boring, right? So it goes up and down. There's lots of elements in it, but it has sort of a rhythm to it. And it has sentences. And structure in a solo starts with the sentences. That's what we call a lick, right? You can, I can go like. You know, I can just play notes over and over again, like you know, country solo, but eh, that's cool too, right? But the, and even that has, has structure within it. And a way to practice structure, once you have your rhythm skills down, your ear training, is to speak, right? So, and relate to the chords in the background. And we forget that. I see time and time again that people put on a jam track or, you know, play a couple of chords on their looper pedal and then they forget about what's in the background. We just do two things. We, we have the track in the background and then we have like an idea that we need a specific scale. So we lay out our tools and say, I'm gonna use the minor the C minor pentatonic over this C minor track with the C natural minor. And perhaps we got a couple of arpeggios we can throw in there as well. And then we just start playing. And we miss a very, very important thing. First of all, we miss training our ear. When, if you practice improvising or soloing in that way, stop it right now. It's an actual exercise. But to do an exercise, we need to be focused on it. It's like practicing alternate picking like this. How much better are you going to get at alternate picking by doing that? You have no focus on what is actually going on. You have no focus on the actual discipline of alternate picking, synchronizing the two hands, you know, and, you know, getting accents in there. And it, when, without focus, you're not practicing. You're basically, first of all, best in best case, you're wasting your time. You know, worst case, you're actually practicing into the ground, getting worse at improvising and playing solos. What you need to be doing is you need to have a couple of chords in the background. Let me just see what we can do. And full circle. The first structure is the whole thing. That's the big one. And we go G, B minor with G in bass. Uh, it doesn't matter what chord it is. F sharp major. <coughs> Full circle right there. And next chord. And the third bar chord. And the fourth bar. And full circle. If you lose the ability to feel that when you play solos, you're out of it. You're out of the game. You, you know, referee's gonna blow his whistle and you get the red card. You just get, get, get out of here, right? Because you're not soloing anymore. So you need to be able to... And 
full circle over again. And full circle. And fourth chord. Full circle right there, right? That's the first structure. It's all of the chords. It's the period. It's the full circle. Then the second is the phrasing. It's a structure, right? You need to put phrases in there, like when you're talking. So I need to go. Full circle. So I start a new story every time I'm full circle. And new chord. And full circle. And full circle. See what I'm doing here? This is the simple structure in the world. Playing something up against these chords. Now you're playing with the track. So I go chord and chord. New chord. Fourth chord. Next chord. Alright. New chord. Full circle. Third chord. Fourth chord. And full circle. I was just breaking up the structure, but the first part is to know your period there, the four bars, and then secondly, to play up against each chord, right, next level. Every time the chord changes, that's a new little thing, a new little box, and you play something in this chord, then you play something in that chord, and the cool thing is, if it's connected, right, and then you come to the fourth chord, which is a turnaround to the full circle again, so you might just play... New chord. And new chord. And new chord. Full circle. Right? Right? So you take, you play the same freaking thing in the three chords in order to have focus on the chords, play a new thing, a variation to that, right? In the end of it, and then you come up with a new change or a new little lick of two notes, right? Like. A new chord. A new chord. My new chord. New chord. New chord. And the fourth chord. And full circle, right? You hear that? You can even hear it in my playing even though there's no chords in the background. You need to be able to do that. It's not a, like a luxury. Oh, that's an interesting idea, Klaus. No, it's not. If you can't do this, you can't improvise. If you can't do this, you can't play solos right off the bat with no preparation. It doesn't happen. It's a skill. And how do you get that skill? By focusing more on the chords than what you play over here. Right? We used to forget about this. I used to forget about this when I was playing. You said, oh, let it run there. Here, I got my scales, my iPad, Joe's okay. Right? And it sounds like crap. It sounds like an amateur, right? So the next level of exercise would be to say, okay, now I, just, I don't want to follow each chord anymore. I want to have the, the chords blow by in the background, but I still want to, I want to focus on the, the chord changes. I want to know where they are. I want to feel them. But you can only do that if you, you're very strict about following them in the beginning and following the full circle there. Then you can start just, at some point, it's just like you're released, right? You can follow each chord, you can follow the process and the, the whole period and each chord, and suddenly it becomes so easy that you're just feeling it. And then it means that you can play anything up here and it will still be structure. That's when you are released into being able to improvise. Uh, and of course you need the ear to, to 
to find the right notes at the right time. You need the rhythm to complete your sentences without uh, stumbling and, oh, where am I going with this? Uh, oh, well, start over again, right? That's rhythm. So let's just try and do a demo of the ultimate, right? It's just B minor, B minor with A in the bass, and then B minor with G in the bass. A in bass, G in the bass, and then an F sharp, right? And then I play the, the B minor pentatonic on top of that. But then at this point now, I can play around with it. I'm not no longer afraid that I'm gonna lose track of where I am because that's automatic in my body. So. See, I'm still fourth chord, new chord, and fourth chord. It's just, but but in order to get to that place, you need to practice it with focus until it's effortless, which is the key word in improvisation here. Everything needs to be effortless, right? And it's not about the scales. It's not about the arpeggios. As I said, you can you can do all this. You can become a master improviser using just the minor pentatonic scale or the pentatonic scale, right? And then you can just do everything with that and have so much fun. And then you can just add tools like the natural minor and the melodic minor, the harmonic minor, and you can know when to use what. And you can do arpeggios and, you know, <laughs> get all kinds of melodic ideas from that by expanding your tools. But it's not it, right? It's not it. It's just added luxury. So use this little method here and be sure to focus more on the track than on what you're playing until this, keeping track of this is automatic. And then you have structure in your playing. In our eight week process, the new program out here, mega program, we will teach you this, but not with uh, a couple of exercises that you can do right now and become much better at this. We have a training process for you that is so methodical and so step by step that if you start in one end and end in the other, you cannot not become a supreme master of this. And when you combine all the different sub skills of improvisation, it's just magic happens because suddenly you understand on a physical experiential level what it really means to improvise. It's as simple as talking and thinking. It really is. And it's so much fun. And then people are gonna get to you, you know, gonna come to you and say, oh, you're so talented. Oh, the magic you just did at the end of that solo. It was amazing. And you're just looking at them and say, you're doing it right now, you're talking. It's the same skill. You just need to convert that skill to notes and music, right, on the fretboard. But it's the same thing you do. And, and everyone can do it, no matter how much talent you think you have. So go check that out, that program, got it all lined up for you and start practicing like this and never, ever, ever again practice without a focus on structure when you play up against the jam track. It's a waste of time. Worst case, it's hurting your development. So see you in tomorrow's video where we're going to deep even dive even deeper down into the um, skill, the craft of improvising. Subscribe for more free videos. Do it. Do it now. Do it.